Before talking about the actual camera, let's talk about how it fits so wonderfully well into the B-Brain V2 mount. So I recorded that first bit kind of a while ago, and I actually didn't release it because I knew that the Beta FPV camera was coming out. Actually, I, I received it the day I recorded that video, and I just didn't get a chance to, to test it. And I finally got a chance, finally got back from CES, had a chance to test that camera, or this camera that you're looking at, which is the Beta FPV camera, and it is um, pretty good too. And so the let's talk about the Nano 3 first. The Nano 3 without the wires, without its wires, which you can see here, it's just crammed into the, the mount, which I just showed you guys how to install into the mount. Um, I did crash, and I just crack off the top piece of my uh, mount. The Nano 3 is my favorite camera right now for tiny things. It, it performs so well. I mean, the lens is, is remarkable how distortion-free it is. Even though I actually prefer the distortion of the OV-231 or the Whoop cameras, I like that warped view because it just makes me feel like I'm in the picture. Like, it's like, cool. Like, I feel like I'm going faster. The Nano 3 is overall so much better that I don't really care about that warped view. And I'm weird for even liking that warped view. Most people don't like that at all. So the Nano 3 really a fantastic camera without the wire with a really short wire it weighs about one gram like total and you just can't beat this camera for the quality of picture that you're getting for the weight of the camera and also it's 20 bucks so it's not like extravagantly expensive the the picture quality field of view everything about this camera is so good that i would even run this on five inch race quads or even my own five inch acro or cinematic quads that's how good it is I would actually compare this camera with the Micro Eagle. That's how good I feel it is. And that might be a little extravagant, but bear with me. This camera is one gram and the Micro Eagle is like nine point something grams and has a massive lens on it and has a huge sensor. And for how small and nothing this tiny little camera is, I really truly can't believe how well it does perform. Now there has been some quality control issues that people have reported, and I have reported that to RunCam. We haven't actually seen any of those quality control issues. People are saying that the lens, at, the lens housing just falls off completely. I have been, you can see here, I've been battering my quads and I have not had a single one fall off. I have like five of them in circulation that are actually being used. And I've only heard of really one person posting that has dropped the lens, and maybe it's just the squeaky wheel making a lot of noise, but I have reported this to RunCam, and they will be adding a bunch of epoxy around the lens uh, housing to hold it onto the board as well. Um, but as is, I don't, I don't see any quality concern issues as it is. Now, um, yeah, let's leave that there, and let's talk about the beta camera. So I did, I, the beta camera is inside this little casing, but it essentially is pretty much the same sort of thing. It does not actually fit in the B-Brain V2 mount. It is a different dimension than the Runcam Nano, so that is a little bit annoying. I did have to use it inside this little um, beta canopy so that I could actually run it on my quad. Now, this camera has a true lens on it. This one has kind of this weird, unique pancake sort of lens, which it is obviously is a true lens, but this one has a more traditional lens, I should say. This one, the beta camera has a more traditional lens on it, and because of that traditional lens, the weight of this camera is actually almost double that of the Nano 3. Double means 1.9 grams. It doesn't mean a whole lot of weight, but it's still double the weight of the Nano 3. So you should expect the quality to be at least the same, if not better. Now, you can't really tell a whole lot in this DVR footage. I'm going to play it back over and over. I've already been playing it back over and over. It's really hard to tell the difference between these two cameras. They do they do look really, really similar on, on YouTube at the DVR footage, but when you look through the goggles, you can absolutely tell that the Nano 3 does look a little bit sharper. However, the Nano 3 does have a little bit of vignetting on the corners. Now, not vignetting like it's chopping them off. The corners are just a little bit dimmer. The um, Beta FPV camera does that as well, but just not as much as the Nano 3. The light handling on the Beta FPV camera is different. It's not better or worse. These cameras have different light handling. Some people don't like the fact that the Nano 3 struggles a little bit with a bright background and a dark foreground, but honestly, every camera shy of the Predator cameras can't handle that situation. That's literally the most difficult photographic situation to deal with. Bright background, dark foreground, like it's like just annoying. We don't have flash on these quads. We don't have a flashlight to brighten the foreground. So that's just not gonna work out no matter what you do. And the beta camera doesn't do a better job in that scenario anyways. So it doesn't really matter. 
at the end of the day, both these cameras are great. I'm really happy to see that we have some really good uh, micro camera options to choose from and I'm um, just thrilled about it completely. Now compared to the Micro Eagle, um, neither one of these cameras do the same kind of low light performance. However, the Nano 3, the low light performance is actually very similar to the Micro Eagle except for the fact that because of the, the design of the lens, because of how the lens is, it's actually refracting on itself in low light situations because of a whole bunch of things and you get a blurring effect. Also the sensor just doesn't do very well in low light. It is smaller as well. So the overall view from the Nano 3 in low light, meaning light to the point where you probably wouldn't want to fly anyways, is a little bit more blurry than the Runcam Micro Eagle. But again, I'm comparing this camera to a nine gram camera that way that costs more than twice as much and is huge com by comparison. So it's really amazing to even be able to compare it to that camera. The sharpness of the Nano 3 compared to a Micro Eagle is very, very similar as well with the Micro Eagle just being a little bit better. I think this Nano 3 is so good. I would use this camera over pretty much any other micro camera shy of the Micro Eagle. Now I haven't tried the Micro um, Razor from Foxier. I haven't tried the Nano Razor or the Cadex Rattel Nano, whatever. I haven't tried those cameras yet either, but um, I'm sure they're going to be good. I'm going to try those and I like them. Hopefully the Cadex cameras hold up in the quality and I can recommend them and use them on my own quads. But I'm really, truly, incredibly impressed with this Nano 3 camera. I think it's a really hard decision to go wrong on. Obviously nothing has a perfect quality control, but hey, it's a great item and it's the one I've chosen to go with for all of my toothpick style quads because it fits in this V-Brain mount, which I love so much. And it's so durable. It's such a, you just can't go wrong with this mount. Just the whole setup with the V-Brain mount and the Nano 3, it weighs like 2.2 grams and it's so durable, so awesome really thankful for Ron Cam for coming out with this camera. Um, take care, floss your teeth. Sorry for the delay in this video. Bye. So let's talk about how to actually fit it in here because the board is actually just barely the right size to fit into this mount. So the way that I recommend, and it is very cold out, so my fingers are very cold and this plastic is very cold as well, is flexing out these two tabs on the side of the mount. Now you've created a space that's a little bit wider than those tabs and then you can proceed to just push the, the camera directly into the mount be very careful don't push too hard as I'm not I'm actually flexing it out a little bit more trying to get it to pop in place which I'm not going to complete because I actually want to show you the camera anyways it pops into the mount really perfectly and then you'll notice here the little bumpers are actually a little bit too long you got to snip them short like here and by the time you're done, you've got a camera in a mount that is fantastically protected and, I mean, just looks gloriously good. But let's talk about the camera itself. So this camera is special because of two reasons. The main reason of which is it has a full-size third-inch sensor. I say full-size because that's the same size sensor that micro and regular nano cameras use, not whoop cams. So whoop cams use a quarter-inch sensor. And the reason why the sensor size is important is because that's how it sees. That's how it collects light in order to see. And having a larger sensor is always better. In this situation, that is exactly the case. This thing collects light way better than the OV231, 199C, or any other typical little whoop camera that's out there. I'll talk about the lens in a minute as well. But uh, the version that we get in the FPV Cycle store, it actually comes with this little extra dongle wire that converts the little connector on here to a to the to the other side, to the other end, and it's actually a I think it's, yeah, it's the smaller version of this connector. And I did that. I, had, I don't know if they're going to include this with all of them at all stores, but I asked them to include this wire for us because that's actually the size that plugs into the B, newbie drone. The newbie drone stuff uses that size. So, yeah, the wires are long. You can just snip them short, but at least you have all the parts you need in order to do that. And if you snip the wires short, connector off and everything, this camera is actually a gram.